Hi, Dawn Lewis here, and today I'm talking to you about something a little bit different, but kind of craft related, and it's menu planning. Okay, so menu planning's not directly craft related, however, it is one of the ways I cram as much craft into my life as I am able to. I hate spending tons of time at the grocery store. I don't want to walk up and down every single aisle and I certainly do not want to come out of there with a whole bunch of impulse buys because that impulse buy money on stuff at the grocery store is going to eat into my craft budget. Am I right? I know I'm right. So one of my tricks is to menu plan and by menu planning uh, it means I know exactly what I need to buy for the week. If we're not going to have potatoes I don't need to buy potatoes. If we're not having rice I don't need to buy rice if we're not having chicken who am I kidding we always have chicken but you know if there's something that you don't need for a meal particularly in the way of fresh fruit and vegetables and meat don't buy it and the way to do that plan your meals so I've got a few of my secret weapons for you number one what do you cook what do you see your family like to eat what are your favorite dinners start making a list I have a huge master list I have two pages of meals but my secret weapon is that I have four columns, one for each family member to the right of those meals and I tick who eats that meal. I have two highly fussy eaters in my house and there are some things that they just won't eat. It drives me mental. So I have a column and I have it ticked. So what I do is at the beginning of the week, I'll cook a double batch of something the super fussy eater really likes. And if I'm cooking something later in the week that just the three or two of us like, there's leftovers. They know how to use the microwave. They're teenagers. Start building your list. If you think of a meal, jot it down in a notebook. You can build it up over time. And hey, if you've got seven meals, you've got a whole week's menu all planned out. If you make a weekly menu that you really like and you go, that works really well, keep it, keep it. Put it in a folder, put it in your binder, put it in your planner, put it on the fridge, whatever it takes. Keep those menus at work and remember what works for summer may not work for winter and the other way around. My second secret weapon is a grocery master list. When people see this, they freak out a little bit. Please don't freak out when I tell you this is something I developed over years and it serves me really, really well. I just did an inventory of my pantry, my fridge, my freezer, wherever I keep the food and wrote down the things that I always keep in there. We always have tuna in there with there was always uh, spare self-raising flour and plain flour and all these different things for baking and for dinners and for snacks and all that kind of stuff. So I have a master list of every single thing I buy at the grocery store. So <laughs> I'll admit it, my OCD kicked in and I decided that it was a little bit of a pain. So what I did was I sorted the list into the order in which I come across the items in the store. So let's take, for example, my Aldi list. When I walk into my Aldi, the first thing I see is tea, coffee, condiments, peanut butter, jam, Vegemite, Milo, biscuits, crackers, and so on up the aisle. I know it really well. So I just started reordering my list so that things were in groupings of where I came across them in the store. What that meant was I wasn't backtracking to get the saladas at the front of the store when I got to the checkout. Again, I didn't do this all at once. And in fact, the most devastating thing was when I did do it and I got that list and it was all perfect, Aldi moved everything. And then I got my Coles list perfect and Coles moved everything. So I reorder it about every six months. Sometimes there are new things that come into my way of cooking and sometimes there are things that I don't use anymore because I am constantly evolving the way that I cook. Just recently I made little cards, I took index cards and I actually wrote out all the ingredients I need for the main meals, the ones that I just don't have in my head, things that are fairly new to me, so that uh, when I pick things off my master plan for my menu, I can look and go pull the card and it just tells me all the ingredients so I know exactly what I've got in the pantry and what I need to buy that's fresh. Again, this is something you can throw together over time. You don't have to do it all at once because quite frankly, it's a big job and taking little bites out of it is the perfect way to go. So you might be wondering, how is this saving me time in the craft room? Well, if you can instantly look at a list and decide this week for dinner, we're having this, 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 and we'll have a leftovers night or we're going out on that particular night. And then you go, oh, for this, I need this, 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 you know what you need to buy to make those things. 
then you can do a quick inventory of the pantry. Does anyone need anything in the bathroom? I have my list pre-printed. So I have a col I have columns. I have Aldi, I have Coles, I have the fruit and veg store, I have the butcher, and I have the pet store for you know things that we need for Miss Quality Control Kitty. And I keep that blank list. I print about 20 at a time and I keep that on my fridge with a highlighter. And so if something runs out, highlight it on the list. So I don't have to make a grocery list. It's made consistently. If you use the last of something out of the fridge or the pantry, the cupboard, you just highlight it. Good to go. That saves me a lot of time instead of writing actual things down on a list and then transferring that and going, oh, will I get this at Aldi? Will I get it at Coles? Will I get it at the fruit shop? I know exactly where I like to buy the best of everything. And the highlighting means that when I'm moving through the store, I can see exactly what I need to pick up and put in my trolley. I can be in and out of Aldi on a big shop week in half an hour. My last two secret weapons here are just before you go shopping, clean out the fridge. The next thing that I do is I got a tray, just a clear tray from Kmart, and that is the leftover tray. It goes all the way to the back of the fridge. So I put my leftovers into Gladware containers so hubby can take them to work or I might have it for lunch, and I put them in the tray. It's like a drawer that slides out, uh, and that way they don't get lost at the back of the fridge, and everyone knows that's where the leftovers are. Have a good purge every 12 months get spring cleaning in your pantry your fridge and your freezer and get rid of stuff that is out of date or you just know you're not going to eat it if there's a whole bunch of stuff that is still really good food but you know you're not going to use it donate it to a local food pantry it's handy to know exactly what you have in your fridge and freezer because one day you too could have a four day blackout and lose the lot if you know what's in there, it means that you can contact your insurance company and replace it all. It's the ultimate spring clean and I can't say I recommend it. And my last bonus little tip is defrosting. If you're keeping meat in the freezer and you know that you need to have it defrosted for tomorrow night's dinner, I have a really old baking tray. It sits on the bottom shelf of my fridge. I have it covered in foil because sometimes those meat packages, it leaks meat juice and it gets all in everything. If you've got it on a tray, I just scrunch up the foil, throw it in the bin and put a new piece of foil on there. It's pretty sweet. I have to admit, I only recover that maybe two, three times a year, so it's not too bad. It also means your meat is defrosting really safely and you're not going to get sick, which means it's not going to cut into your crafting time. I know it sounds like a lot of lists and if you're a list person, you're probably going, yes, this is awesome. If you're not a list person, feel free to disregard it all. I'm just sharing what works for me, what works for my crazy family and my weird schedule. And I hope that maybe some of you get a little bit of, I don't know, inspiration and maybe some extra crafting time. Being organized might not come naturally to all. I love to be organized, but I've got to admit, I have to work really hard at it. But when I'm organized, I just feel better. Thank you everyone for listening to me rave on about lists, even though it's not strictly craft related. If you are saving time, you've got more time to craft. And if you are saving money, you can maybe get that thing you've always wanted to have. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing to my channel. I hope you have a super crafty day and I will see you next time. Bye.